Welcome back to The Extract. I'm Kyle Meyer, and next to me is the irascible, the irrepressible, the amazing Jean-Marc Lafage. Jean-Marc, yeah. pleasure to have you in the you. seat. You know, you. you know, it's we, we've had a lot of, you know, dignitaries and famous people on The Extract. You know, you guys have been watching the show for a long time. We've had some of the greatest winemakers in the world that you might have heard their names before, right? You know, like household, what we call household names here in America. But let me tell you, there is, there is no one more impressive that has sat in this chair next to me than Jean-Marc Lafage, even though you may not know his name, but you know his wines. And, uh, well, your name is on a couple wines. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah. my name is uh, yeah. on this bottle. On that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. But, you know, it's, but it, it's so funny, you know, in... Uh, in America, the, you know, they, they, they tend to drink brand names, okay. you know, so, yeah. so they'll know Novellum, yeah. but they don't know it's you. Mm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you should get a, a press agent or anything yeah. like that. We like the fact that not as many people know who you are because yeah. it means more for us. Yeah. But, but I think it's really important for you guys at home to know today just how awesome uh, Jean-Marc is and, and what, a, what a wonderful thing he's doing uh, for the world of wine and for wine drinkers everywhere. So a sincere welcome. Thank you. And, uh, you know, basically we put three wines on the table today, but three wines from, I think, three different areas within yeah. the area that you work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, you work in southern France in an area, is it, is it all known as the Roussillon? Yeah. Yeah, so we are located uh, near the Spanish border, uh, just uh, next to, uh, to, the, to Spain in one side and uh, to France in the other. Uh, the vineyard, our location is, um, is surrounded by the Pyrenees. So in one side we have the Pyrenees, in the other side we have the Mediterranean Sea, and in the other side we have Andorra. So we are in a very uh, distinctive area where you can have uh, no altitude vineyard touching the sea, or, or mountain and a lot of elevations at 300 meters, 500 meters, 1,000 meters, and mountains going up to uh, 3,000 meters, which make uh, the place very different. In uh, 50 uh, square kilometers, you can find many different kind of, um, of terroir, of uh, elevation, of uh, soil, of exposure, uh, which make uh, the wines uh, very, very different. The grapes very different. Yeah. Having the same kind of grapes coming from different places, you can have different kind of, um, of flavor, of aromas, of, uh, of style mm. of wine. I think you're one of the very first to exploit this fact, this diversity of area in the Roussillon, because for a number of years, I think many people, at least a lot of American, even, even savvy American wine drinkers, thought of the Roussillon as this bread basket, really hot place, big, full-bodied red wines, which it can do, right? Better than anywhere else in the world, maybe. But the Roussillon can also do this. Yeah. This. Yeah. Talk, talk so, to me about Novellum. Yeah, Let's so, talk about the first terroir that you worked yeah, with. Yeah, the first terroir that was working very well is a terroir located uh, near the sea, where uh, the Roussillon, as you were saying, but, uh, can be very hot. But as the same, uh, in the same way, when we have vineyards touching the sea, we have a lot of uh, sea breezes coming in and re refreshing the air, the air and making the climate softer, cooler, with a uh, very big temperature, big uh, difference of temperature between the night and the day which uh, make uh, the, the aromas development much more quiet, much more uh, balanced, and uh, the acidity not dropping, so mm. keeping the wine very, very fresh. Mm. So Novellum is coming from the sea level, um, a very nice uh, block we have uh, on a rocky soil, uh, which uh, make uh, the wine a little bit different, but I would say the main difference we could have with the uh, Novellum is uh, next to the Chardonnay block, we have a Viognier block, which uh, where we are using the leaves from the Viognier to put into the juice of the Chardonnay to give just uh, extra flavor. I would say the wine is 99.9% uh, .9 of Chardonnay and just a little bit of uh, leaves, where when you put the leaves on the top of the tank, just uh, decanting, the leaves are giving expression to the, to the wine, which, which makes the wine with more character, more, uh, more fruit flavor. It creates a little more of a floral, you know, yeah, that classic yeah. floral, like classic peach, honeysuckle floral, yeah, character. Yeah, so apricot, floral, uh, uh, peach, apricot, yeah. uh, dry, uh, dry fruit. Now these vineyards can actually see the water, right? Yeah. These are really close to the water. Yeah, yeah. So we are not allowed to, to irrigate. So mm -hmm. we don't put any irrigation, but the sea breezes, is uh, giving some very fresh air and some humidity too, which uh, make, uh, I would say, the plants happy. Yeah, I'll say, <laughs> this is pretty good. Oak? 
No, uh, a little bit. We, uh, we do ferment about 10, 15 percent in Newark, but just the time of the alcoholic fermentation. Mm. Where in the Roussillon, we have the feeling that we have very good grapes and we don't want to uh, push too much the oak uh, uh, extraction for getting our fruit expression being, uh, being uh, nice and, and elegant. Mm -hmm. Would you, like, it, it, for the folks at home, I mean, for the, you know, a lot of folks here in America, would you say that this particular climate resembles any particular place in California, or is this its very own unique spot because of its... I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not so professional in, uh, in uh, terroir from California to say, but I will say it will be much more like uh, maybe Sonoma mm -hmm. than uh, Central Coast. Uh, Got it, okay. Sure. But uh, very fresh, uh, very fresh uh, place. At least in the Roussillon, it's one of the freshest uh, places uh, we have. Now, because it's Chardonnay, you can only call it typically Vin de France? Yeah, uh, Chardonnay, because it's just um, one, uh, one varietal in our place, we are not allowed to call it uh, EGP or AOP, where it has to be a blend mm -hmm. between uh, different, uh, different uh, varietals. All right. And, uh, of course, a lot of people, rosé is a big deal now. I don't know if anybody makes better rosé in the world for the money than Jean-Marc Lafage. Um, Thank you. Very unique vineyard area to produce this wine, right? Yeah. Again, talking about unique. And again, you know, we're going back to the Roussillon where a lot of people for years thought of it just as, as this last wine, okay, the big full-bodied reds, but this wine's gorgeous, perfectly proportioned, brilliant acidity, wonderful flavors, and you're damn good at what you do. Now, how does the rosé convey over to the Roussillon? Like, what makes yeah. it? The rosé in the Roussillon is the last, uh, we were used to make uh, rosé wine in the last uh, 50 years, but it was just a draining from a red, a red tank. So we were making that kind of red, mm -hmm. and we were making rosé with that kind of grapes, which was very, very dark, dark rosé and heavy rosé. Uh, after we, uh, we've been uh, thinking about uh, having a soft, uh, soft rosé, maybe a bit like uh, the Provence uh, style, uh, light in color, more elegant, fresh, and uh, we decided to make, uh, to try to adapt uh, the white philosophy to the rosé style of wine. So, I mean, uh, the vineyards are located uh, for most of them near the sea, like, um, like the Nouvelle Homme Chardonnay. Uh, most of the grapes are Grenache Gris, in our place, we have uh, three kinds of Grenache, Grenache Blanc to make white wine, Grenache Gris to make white wine or rosé wine, and Grenache Noir, which is the usual Grenache uh, we call the uh, Grenache Noir. So this, uh, this wine is a blend of 80% Grenache Gris and 20% uh, Mourvedre, which uh, in our place, uh, some Mourvedre are looking to the sea, and uh, this Mourvedre may be not um, concentrated enough to make a big red wine, so we prefer to use them to make a nice, soft, uh, and elegant rosé. And the Grenache Gris, it's actually like a, like a pink Grenache, yeah. right? The skin has yeah. a little bit, so you almost, uh, it almost naturally kind of comes out this color yeah, when yeah, you vinify sure, it, sure. right? Yeah, when I was saying that the Grenache Gris can make white wine, when you start press the Grenache Gris, the first uh, drainings goes to uh, some uh, cuvee white in white wine. Mm. And the second pressing, which will be a little bit pale, will use it to make, uh, to make uh, the Rosé Miraflor. Mm. I think a lot of people don't understand the history with, with Grenache in the, in the Roussillon because uh, I, I don't know if any, well, I mean, outside of Chateau du Pape, I don't know if any place is more centered on Grenache, you know, mm. especially with the three varieties, this Grenache Gris and the Grenache Blanc, these old, old vineyards that you yeah. have. Can yeah, you yeah. talk about those? Yeah, actually, we're in a place where uh, in the past, uh, 45 wines uh, were very famous. Yeah, and, uh, wines, yeah. and that's the point, uh, because uh, we, people had to make uh, 45 wines, they had to pick the grapes at uh, 16, 17, 18 percent volume alcohol potential. And it was very difficult to get to this point. So you had to have a very low crop per vine to get it. Mm -hmm. And as the lower crop you have, the, the uh, oldest vine you get. So all, I mean, all vines goes with low crop. Mm -hmm. So we've been lucky at the end to have uh, these 45 wines not working so well today, yeah, but yeah. having people maintaining the vine to get today, to, get today to, to a point where we can get those grapes to make table wine and to make that kind of uh, rosé wine, which, which I think is really, uh, I've been working in many different places, and it's one of the only places where you can buy vineyards in perfect condi condition at 80 years old, 70 years old, 80 years old, 100 years old. It's amazing how, how people maintain their vineyard in the past to make those uh, fortified wines. But if, if you hadn't made the fortified wines, maybe these vines would have been taken yeah, out sure, sure. a long time yeah, ago yeah, because yeah. they weren't economically viable. Yeah. 
Uh, this yeah. kind of grapes in other places, like in the uh, Languedoc, we were in the Roussillon, but yeah. in the Languedoc, they pull out 50 years ago to plant it back uh, Cabernet, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, and, uh, and Merlot. So, because in this place they were not making fortified wines and they didn't like too much uh, the Carignan and uh, the Grenache, and uh, so they pull it out and put uh, some, uh, at that uh, time, uh, new varietals, mm -hmm. who was uh, Cabernet and Chardonnay. But in our place, anyway, the Merlot doesn't work, the Cabernet doesn't work, no. so we keep going, uh, working with what works and what yeah. is working best uh, as, uh, as the grapes we've been having in our place for ages, for mm. thousands of years. You know, it's funny, it's almost the same parallel as when uh, White Zinfandel essentially saved all the old Vine Zinfandel mm. vineyards in Sonoma back in, the, back in the 80s into the early 90s, same type of deal. <laughs> hey Mike, I really like this White Zinfandel. Well good, good. Now put it down, we're going to try another one. You know, Gallo and everybody making white zin, and they didn't pull the vineyards out because they had the crops sold. And now we have all these wonderful old vine Zinfandels. You know, it's the same thing here where Grenache Grieve was a nothing no. to anyone forever. No. No. And then when you taste a wine like this, mm. or you taste a couple of your whites yeah. based on those old vine Grenache Grieve, mm. it, fantastic. Okay, finally, let's, uh, let's get to what made the Roussillon the Roussillon, I guess. But... This is, it, was this your family's original yeah. property? Yeah, uh, no, no, it's no. not uh, original property, I bought it, but uh, I'm the seventh generation, and uh, my father born in Mori, mm -hmm. and um, his father, when, uh, when he got uh, 20, he want, my father wanted to keep going in Mori, but uh, four kids, two, uh, the Mori sweet wine was working very well at that uh, time, so the pr price of land was too expensive. So <laughs> my grandfather let one of his boys in Mori, and the three others went back to Perpignan. Went to Perpignan, mm -hmm. not back to Perpignan. Mm -hmm. uh, but my, I always uh, heard my father talking about Mori, Mori, Mori. Best grapes are in Mori, Mori, Mori. So when I called, I went back to Mori, and I bought this estate where he was having a um, good time in mm -hmm. the really past, I would say, when he was uh, 15 and 13, yeah. working with his father in uh, some blocks just nearby Mori, just yeah. nearby Saint Roch. Yeah. Actually. yeah. So it's more a family uh, comeback. To, now, um, to our at, roots. at that time, was the estate making dry wine or was no. the estate working on, on, on no, sweet wine? Just sweet, sweet wine. Just yeah. sweet wine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so much like port, you know, it was a fortified wine. The Mori wines of the past were a fort, bold, red, full bodied, yeah. fortified red wine, yeah. right? Yeah. So almost like making port. Yeah. Now, did you have to do any work in the vineyard to change the vines when you went to make dry red wine from this you know, property? As I was saying, uh, when we took over, uh, 80 or 90 percent of the blocks were uh, bush vine, mm -hmm. uh, very old, like uh, between 50 to 90 years old. So you don't change anything. You yeah. just uh, let the nature doing mm -hmm. uh, its work. And it's really good because the bush vine makes the, you have leaves all around the vine, which is uh, protecting very well of the sun. And you don't want, as, as us, we don't want to get sunshine. Mm -hmm. So if we have a good, uh, a good protection with leaves, it's like having a, a good uh, nice shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's sunscreen. You know? Yeah, sunscreen. <laughs> so that's a bit uh, the idea. And after, you have to be uh, very careful in our place because Mori was very well known to make fortified wines because we have a very big uh, wind in our place called mm -hmm. Tramontana. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we have the Tramontana blowing, uh, it can blow for three or four days. And you can go from uh, 14, 15 percent volume alcohol to 18, 19 in three days. Yeah. So you have to be very careful because you have to pick it by hand. There are all bush vine and the yeah. machine cannot go in. Mm. So you have to be ready with your team to go in a very quick way just to take out the grapes when, when, you, when you have to. Mm. A labor of love. We have uh, what, about 90 seconds left. Okay. Um, so in, in 90 seconds, the difference between Clay soil and schist soil, the slate. I, uh, clay, uh, so schist uh, soil is mori. Yeah. 95% of the soil in mori are black slate, mm. uh, schist, which uh, means it's a very black uh, soil, retaining the heat all day, uh, giving back the heat uh, the night, and making uh, the wine very fruity and sometimes a, bit, a little bit jammy. Mm. Clay soil will be completely different. Uh, sometimes in our place, it's good to, to have a little, little bit of clay because we are not allowed to irrigate the vineyard. 
So the clay tends to retain the water. Mm. So it's good for the vineyard like that, which is producing very low. We're talking about three tons per hectare, maybe 20 hectoliters per hectare, which is very, very low. It's good for our soil to have a little bit of clay, to retain a little bit of water, to give back to the, to the root and to the plant for, our, for having the plant surviving, yeah. I would say, for <laughs> so it, in, the, in this, uh, <laughs> in this uh, time of, uh, of maturation. I'm not going to quote any prices because the prices are different everywhere in America. Needless to say, these are three of the greatest wine values, not of France, but the world. And in fact, Jean-Marc, you can work on so many fronts and do it so expertly. Uh, nothing but love for you. Mm -hmm. Amazing wines. And thank, thank you. you so much for doing what you do. Thank and thank you. you for coming today. Thank you uh, for the invitation. Master. Yeah. What? Yeah. Enjoy your wines. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. Bye.